and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Gathered to ask the Lord's blessing, as it says, to encounter uh, in the scriptures his invitation. Again, love of God, love of neighbor. Pray more and more as those two uh, interact and intersect. And so we take in that moment then uh, some time to call to mind the intentions that we bring today. Those who have asked us to pray for them, who we've promised to pray for, those most in need of our prayers. And brothers and sisters, as we call to mind our sins, we ask the Lord to prepare us to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Sarah, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. 
rose. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender, choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set those before the three men. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? He replied, they are in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to oil song, he who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. One who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Lends not his money at nursery and accepts no bribe against the innocent. One who does these things shall never be disturbed. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of the Christ on behalf of this body, which is the church, of which I am a minister. In accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring in completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past, but now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chooses to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may be present, everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord.
So I think a good example of that would be like riding a bicycle. Thing. What moves first, the pedals or the wheel? Well, they move at the same time. It's, but when we look at that, okay, even if the pedals and the wheel are moving at the same time, we can tell there is a cause and effect relationship, that it's the pedals that move the wheel and not vice versa. That it's an image in a certain sense, I think, of that connection between grace and human action, of love of God and love of neighbor, lastly, of faith and works, as we might say. That's an area, of course, that has been a great uh, controversy throughout the history of the church. Um, one of the main causes in terms of the theological reasons for the Protestant split in the 1500s was a concern that the church um, did not give a primacy to faith. But in fact, we very much do. That when we look at this again, faith and works, love of God, love of neighbor, that there is within that a structure. It's part of why often people don't like this gospel. It's not graded highly among people's favorite gospels because most people identify with Mark. They're like, yeah, what's Mary doing? She should be there you know, helping serve. It makes people angry. They don't want to hear it. Or at least even, they may know that there's something there, but it, it, it still it, it sparks something within us. That Jesus is clear that the better part is what Mary is doing. Now, he doesn't say that what Mark is doing is not important. You know, he can say, what's more, a million dollars or a billion dollars? Well, they're both a lot of money, even if one is more than the other. That the love of God and love of neighbor have this certain internal structure. Even last week, when they asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said that first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul strength. The second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. So we affirm that primacy of love of God, that primacy that it has of God's action of grace. However, the reason I think that we get frustrated with this, this story of Mark and Mary is because we also affirm, we need to make sure we affirm the importance of love of neighbor. Because again, sometimes there can be that thought that if, if love of God is first, then love of neighbor is not important or can be disposed of. And that's not the case. The, the scriptures, when we look at this gospel and its context, we see the way that it is presenting to us that complex reality. That there's kind of been two mistakes in regards to the relationship of God's action and our action. One is called Pelagianism, which is when we ourselves think that by our own action, we can save ourselves without the grace of God. We don't believe that. That's the, the, mis the mistake that uh, Martin Luther thought that the Catholic Church held to that position, but we don't. We condemn it. That we don't believe that we can save ourselves by our own actions. However, the other side of the, the cliff, so to speak, is what's called quietism. Quietism is that belief that God just saves us without um, inviting us at any point to be in, co in cooperation with that. Faith alone to the point that it becomes purely God's action without any human involvement. That it's by the grace of God, again, that we're able to do that. Again, when we look at that, that internal structure, both of the, of the bicycle, the pedals and the wheel, both should be moving. Now there's that primacy, that it's the grace of God. It was Christ you know, who saved us from the cross. It's the grace of God that moves within us first to prompt that ability and to prompt that uh, desire to cooperate. That it's from him we receive it. But that, again, that love that he wants of us is not just love of God, but it's also love of neighbor. They're intrinsically bound. So when we read our Gospels on Sunday, we don't always see them in context. What was the passage right before this? What was the passage right after this? But we're in the middle of what is called a continuous reading. So we've just been reading part to part to part uh, Luke's Gospel for a little bit. Sometimes it will jump, but we've actually just been looking at a number of, and we'll have one more in the sequence, back-to-back -back readings from Luke. And so it's important, I think, and helpful to look at that. So last, the immediate text right before this gospel was the Good Spirit. And the immediate text right before that was the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The twofold commandment, love of God, love of neighbor. That as Jesus is teaching, you know, he teaches the, you know, the greatest commandment and then the secondary commandment. But then he gives this parable of the Good Spirit. To remind of the essential nature of love of God, or sorry, love of neighbor, if we want to truly love God. Then he goes immediately from there, visits Martha and Mary, and gives this lesson, which again reaffirms the uh, privacy of prayer, which then next week we'll hear a uh, teaching on prayer that, that is the, the 
passage that follows this. So again, I think looking at that, we can kind of say, well, it seems like it's bouncing back and forth. Which one is it? Well, again, the answer is that it's both. <laughs> that it's not as if one is important, one is not. Love of God, love of neighbor, they're not in competition. They're intrinsically connected. But again, I think we see that if we say we have a love for God, and St. John says this in one of his letters, but if we say we have a love of God, but do not love our neighbor or, or have hatred for our neighbor, then we do not truly love God. <laughs> There's still something there that's missing. That love of God needs to have a love of neighbor connected with it. Because if we love God, we we'll love the things that God loves, and he loves our neighbor. But then likewise, to truly have the most authentic love of neighbor, we need to see them in the light of the gospel. And the Good Samaritan uh, reminds us of that. Our first reading today, so in our first reading, we have Abraham entertaining these three guests, angels in disguise. One of the classic icons actually shows them as the Trinity in disguise, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He welcomes these three travelers he takes, um, treats them you know, with this great kindness, and in the end, receives this, this prophecy of the birth of the Son. That it is uh, another way of looking at what we think of with the phrase from Matthew, what you've done for the least of my brothers and sisters, you've done for me. That in showing this love for these three guests, it's clear that Abraham is showing love for God. That it in fact, again, is God, divine representatives under the appearance of human beings. We want to love our neighbor most authentically, again, we have to see them as God sees them. We have to see them, in fact, as, you know, as Mother Teresa used the phrase, the distressing disguise of the poor. God present there in that midst. But likewise, to most authentically love our neighbor, to love them with the love that Jesus loved us, to love them with that renewed heart, that transformative love of neighbor uh, that goes beyond what we can love just by our human strength alone. That, you know, get back to the bicycle now, you can coast for a while, but if you don't pedal, unless you're going downhill, but again, that's the grace of God at times intervenes when, when we're not even able to. But normally, you know, the, if we need to have something that sustains motion, that without motion we're going to stop, that's going to wear out, we're going to hit that wall. We need that renewal. We need that, that source of strength. Again, Pelagianism is that thought that we can just draw that from ourselves pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, as they say, but that an authentic faith sees the primacy of divine action and divine grace, but that that divine grace can't stay locked in, as we, we talked about last week. It has to be uh, made manifest. That it's not that Mary is right and Martha is wrong, in a sense, that one or not important or the other, but again, we need both, but we need them in the right order. That we can enter into that mystery of what Paul says in our second reading. It says, I make up in my sufferings what's lacking in the suffering of Christ. You get a radical statement. But he's not saying in the terms of Christ wasn't able to do enough on the cross, but that that, he says, in his body, the church, that what was done on the cross is still being realized in us. We still need to have that uh, made present to us, to be applied to us, to be uh, made effective in our life. So that we come back to his one eternal sacrifice cross uh, present here in the Mass and the Eucharist, not because it needs to be repeated because it wasn't strong enough if we just, if it just happened once, but that's because of our own self. need that grace to continually to be at work. So we're continually seeking to love God and to love neighbor, and that we continually need then to receive from God. Again, that we can love in the way that he wants us to, to understand that, 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 that you know, to truly love God, we have to truly love our neighbor. To truly love our neighbor, or to Maybe we say to love our neighbor in the most authentic sense. We need we love them in the for the same reason and with that same strength uh, with which God loves us. So again, this will kind of be a continuation point because this gospel continues then into a teaching of prayer next week. So we'll go more out of it and talk about that in particular. Again, this primacy that he says, Mary has chosen the better part. It'll not be taken from her. But that dedication to our prayer life has to have a certain balance, of course, to our, our responsibilities, uh, that it can't be contrary to love and neighbor, but it needs to have a primacy of grace. It needs to be something for which we sacrifice, something for which we fight, something for which we, we clock to and say, I need this time of prayer, I need this time of enrichment. Because whether I'm, I'm feeling it or not in the moment, I need um, 
that, that source of support for the heart. I need that motivation again. If I'm gonna keep these, these wheels turning, there has to be something turning the wheels, something interior that is, is working itself uh, out in our cooperation. So we ask the Lord that. What, what was our reaction to this gospel? Where in our life is that primacy? How is it that we're living with that, that twofold, twofold call of love of God and love of people? Again, calling to mind a threefold connection, as we saw in our first reading, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we together profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in the spirit of love of neighbor, let us raise our prayers of petition. For the Holy Father, the bishops, priests, deacons, and all the baptized who proclaim the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders and government workers who guard the dignity of human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in economic crisis, for the financial and spiritual support they need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For working people, for sufficient time for recreation and renewal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of our local church who help make it a place of welcome and renewal for the poor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions written in our parody book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living and deceased, for vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, and for Martha Drzezinski, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the Church here and throughout the world, let us pray the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael, the Archangel, the Venus of Battle, be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him when we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell of Satan, and all the evil spirits, the proud of God, the Lord, seek the fruit of souls. Amen. Almighty God, we lift up our prayers. We ask you to hear and answer them. According to your holy will, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 470, All is Well with My Soul.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the raised and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who, is, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought the completion of varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants, make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Died in your mercy, 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the power and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. 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 Offer each other a sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to be you should enter in my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Speaking of the connections between love of God and love of neighbor, I have three um, announcements on that regard. One, uh, coming up a week from Wednesday, so on July 27th, um, we're doing a high school youth uh, pilgrimage to Peoria, so we'll go and um, help with Sophia's Kitchen, which is a, a food kitchen run by St. Joseph Church there. And then go visit and pray at the cathedral a little bit. So uh, if you're interested, there's more info in the, in the entryway, a little sheet in, in the bulletin. We'll have some. Um, second, I want to mention that we're doing, uh, we're in the planning stages of a St. Elizabeth uh, kind of little parish event on August 6th. So that'll be the first Saturday of August. So after Mass, we're going to do kind of a little fellowship gathering, food, different things. We're still, like I said, in the planning stages. So if you're interested in helping with that, uh, talk with me after Mass, since we're kind of putting together what that will exactly be. But again, something to just kind of uh, celebrate together as a parish here at St. Elizabeth. And then last, we're also putting together planning for uh, uh, drive to help if you have extra school supplies or things, um, to help with our Recycled Uniform Day at St. Malachi School. Um, we'll have collections in the next couple weeks, there'll be info in the bulletin, but kind of general school supplies and things like that. Again, keep an eye online or on the bulletin for, for more details on that. Be also kind of in early August. Pray you have a blessed day. Uh, or I should say, actually, the St. Elizabeth aspect, too, part of that is helping to raise funds so our air conditioners are dying. <laughs> you might be able to feel that a little bit. They've been, uh, one of them is kind of on the outs, one is partway there, and one's doing okay. But um, we're going to need to uh, do work on our air conditioners, so there's will be more info on that as well. But that's part of what we'll be helping to kind of fundraise as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 700. All hail, adore to the Trinity.